Harry goes on a mission for Dumbledore in The Half-Blood Prince and in a way becomes this investigator, this detective. And he does it in a quite, you know, he, he takes on quite a manipulative strategy. You know, he learns to work one of his teachers, Professor Slughorn. Um, and it's a kind of new departure. In fact, it's a real departure for Harry as a character. Um, you see him kind of working out how he needs to get what he wants from people um, and using things to achieve that. Like there's a scene in the film where he, you know, talks about his mother and father dying at the hands of Voldemort. And he uses that in a way, in a very strategic way, to get what he wants from Slughorn. Um, so it's a very interesting kind of maturing of the character. Um, which Dan, you know, as he's getting older, is very, you know, very keen to explore. I've worked with Jim Broadbent before. We did a film several years ago called The Young Visitors together, we, and it was a delightful experience. And when I first read the book and then the script, um, even though Jim isn't physically, as Joe describes Slughorn, um, you know, he he knows that character inside out, you know, and I knew his capacity for both comedy and for pathos um, would absolutely bring so much to the table for Slughorn. And it's a delight, and, and he comes up with such witty, interesting, odd, crazy things, Jim, sometimes. The Half-Blood Prince refers to a book which Harry, which comes into Harry's possession and the book is the property of the Half-Blood Prince. And whoever the Half-Blood Prince was, was obviously very, very capable um, at kind of taking the conventional academic text of how to make certain potions. And what he would do is he would scribble things, invert the actual recipes for things, and he would make them significantly better. So whoever the Half-Blood Prince was, he was very smart and a very original thinker. Um, but also quite a dark thinker. He came up with things which um, lead Harry into, s into some very sort of dodgy, dark, dark territory. Um, so there's an, a certain enigma about who the Half-Blood Prince is, which we resolve by the end of the movie. Dumbledore takes Harry to meet Tom Riddle, and Harry gets his first sight of this tiny boy with this terrible power able to um, move objects, make animals do things that they don't want to do. He can even hurt people with his thoughts. And it's a really kind of chilling introduction to the young Voldemort and it kind of, re it kind of allows Harry to kind of just reaffirm why, why it's important that he gets this memory from Slughorn. Malfoy's a great character, you know, because for a number of films, a number of books, he was like the, the bully who was all mouth and no trousers. You know, he was always, he was always talking big, but basically he was, you know, a bit of an idiot, frankly. And suddenly this young man has been given this mission by the Dark Lord. It's a terrible mission. It's a mission of murder. Um, and what that does to a young man's mind, one can't even begin to imagine, because he's not a particularly courageous young man, but he wants, he wants to be a star. He wants, he wants people to recognise him. He wants to be able to be the one who um, pulled off this incredible thing the Dark Lord has asked him to do.